Okay. It says that we're live. I think we're live. Wow. Here we go. Live. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, welcome to the, my very first live stream. So I know it's uh, it's not your first one, but... Uh, Oh, yeah, turn that down. yeah, so not your first. So. Nah, I'm finally a guest. First time. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I get to play the guest. I like that. Uh, so um, the way we'll, I guess we'll do this is uh, if uh, if you want to ask any questions, just um, I, I guess make them in all caps so we can we can spot them. Um, don't yell. You don't need to yell. Don't <laughs> no, no. If you have questions, yeah. You're, you're gonna you're gonna get them. On, yeah, yeah I'll, I'm gonna read them off the the chat list. Yeah. Okay, it's up to you then. Yeah, it's all good. All right, you better do a good job there, boy. <laughs> Y'all can hear us, right? So uh, just make sure so we're not just talking. Okay. <clears throat> so um, before we get into any questions, I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat first. Mm. Um, so, I mean, what's what's been going on? Well, I mean, a lot and not a lot. Do you know what I'm saying? Um we have a lot of things kind of progressing in terms of, you know, people still going back and forth about these false flags and all of a sudden the YouTube censoring got like 10 times as much. We saw all these channels going down. I got two strikes. That's why I can't go live anymore. Um, but in terms of new information, it seems like there's just a constant, it's, it's a, a recycling of the same information we've seen before coming out from the same, you know, like there's just like clockwork now. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's annoying because it's leading people to kind of pick up on really abstract parts of a theory and kind of change the, the model essentially. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm noticing this as well. This is one, I don't talk very much about the flat earth these days because um, well, there's not any new information. You know, we, I think we're getting to the saturation point where um, we've, we've pretty much exhausted all the information that we've been fed and all the information that we can we can measure for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're in the, in the realm of speculation because we, we until we get more information, there's no there's nowhere else we can go. Mm -hmm. You know, we can postulate and make things kind of, you know, sound good and come up with kind of cool ideas. But it does more harm than good sometimes when you take it so far. Um, and, uh, but I mean, the good things coming out of flat earth, I would say is the activism, the street activism. That, some of the channels that is cool. I yeah. Saw a couple uh, of, uh... John Smith channel, uh, Victoria Rose, uh, Dell from beyond the imaginary curve. They all do stuff like that. That's awesome. Nice work. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I like yeah. that stuff. I, um, I want to do it myself. I said, it, I think on a live stream once before I wanted to start doing it myself. So I will do. Well, I was hoping, I hope they were going to do another one while I was in Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Manchester. Yeah. Such is life. Um, but that, that, I mean, yeah, I'm, you're, I'm right on there with you because, uh, yeah, the street activism brilliant. Mm. Um, but as I said, in terms of new information, I mean, I saw a, I'm not going to, we're not going to mention any names here because, <laughs> you know, it's going to start, yeah, it's gonna start <laughs> another load of, round of flame wars, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there was a, a supposedly new video come out and, uh, you know, I started watching it. And the first thing I saw was me talking, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saying yeah. the same things I said. You know, I, I said like two years ago. You know, yeah. Um, this is the thing. You know, we're not we're not getting anything new, and that's that's fine because it can stay there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but what we got is is people um, who have got more of a let's say a financial interest in this, mm -hmm. yeah. rehashing the same things over and over again, and. Um, you know, not really bringing anything new to the table. So, yeah. you know, you know, take, do with that what you will, but there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that, oh, okay. We've got, got a couple of questions. We do have a couple of questions. We got uh, 140 people watching just under. So uh, any questions, fire them through. I'll have a little look. Where's the, can you, you guys can hear us, right? Someone says, where's the bloody sound? Hopefully they can hear us. Oh yeah, they 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 can hear us. Yeah, I can see green going over up and down there, so it must be able to hear us. Um, Caden and his friend says, "Do you guys know what's up with the convex Earth dock? It's supposed to drop tomorrow or something, right?" Um, I, I I don't have anything further to comment on it more than I already did. I'd like you know, there's 
I, I'm, you know, I'm interested to see what's going to come out of it, but like, I don't, you know, I'm not going to put all my eggs into the basket. I think the, the, you know, just the name convex earth. Well, I'm sorry. We've, we kind of uh, debunked that idea, you know. To be fair to them, I think they clarified and they said what they mean by convex even is so, the land protruding even and so. the water. They had to deviate. <laughs> I think they wanted to deviate from the flat earth name because of what, you know what I'm saying? It needed to sound more, Okay. you know. I'm, it, I'm not happy about it, though. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. I think we're just sort of straying into Lord Stephen Christ's domain, right. you know. Okay. No, yeah, no, I hear you. Um, Playful Yogi says, that airplane stuff is wild, huh? Yeah, the, uh, the idea that um, planes actually fly on compressed air. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I think I caused a bit of a storm the other day because I, I posted. I, I flew from St. Lucia to back to Manchester. Mm -hmm. And um, right, the way the, the way the flights work, the, the plane flies from Manchester to St. Lucia, then does a sort of 20-minute hop to Barbados, mm -hmm. and then flies from Barbados back to Manchester. Okay. So because I come across <laughs> this this theory. Um, like a, a couple of months ago or a month or so ago, mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? I'm going to watch. When that plane arrives, I'm going to watch what happens. Mm -hmm. So I, the plane, you know, arrived. I was at the window watching it sort of taxied in, sat there, and they, and this, um, I guess, motorized uh, air pressure, um, air con compressor went up to it and hooked up to it. I could not see anything um you know anything else linked to the plane like like a gas pipe maybe. yeah you know, i was expecting you know, like there's tanks under the ground and mm -hmm. they're going to sort of well take a pipe up into some pump and then into the plane i didn't see that okay granted i couldn't see i didn't have a you know 360 degree view yeah yeah but i i think i would have seen something else you know dangling from the plane you'd right? imagine yeah so um we got onto the plane and it was on the tarmac. It wasn't like we were going through like a jetway or anything. Yeah. We had to walk out to the plane to the, you know, on the tarmac. So we walked out and again, I could see um, nothing attached to the plane. There was this big blue um, compressor there with two yellow pipes going into the plane. And I, you know, as I was walking up there and stuff, I was taking pictures of it mm. um, and I, they were the ones I posted up. But nothing was on there. Uh, nothing else was on there. Um, it wasn't sitting there long enough to be refueled yeah. for a flight um, to Manchester. Yeah. Okay. Because it just arrived from Manchester in non stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we do the uh, 20 minute hop to Barbados. Mm -hmm. And um, again, uh, I was, you know, came off the plane. I was only out of visual contact for about 20 minutes. We had a sort of, you know, light security. And then back to the terminal, which was right there in front of the plane. Um, so I was watching it all that time. Again, nothing was was uh, connected to it apart from this compressor thing, mm -hmm. right? And and that's it. I, I was watching it for all that time. I didn't see it get refueled. And then we got on it, and uh, and we flew to Manchester. Yeah. So <laughs> again, hours. again, there's there's a possibility that I couldn't have seen every everything you know um 20 minutes there's a possibility but at the same time it's like the time that is it's it, the amount of fuel we're talking is tons of fuel we're talking is getting loaded into this thing and how wide is this pipe you know how mm -hmm. fast is this flowing for like i don't know whether the time frame even puts it in the realm of possibility for at least to be as much fuel you know um, yeah um <clears throat> now Again, 20 minutes was out, and uh, I couldn't see all angles. So mm -hmm. yeah. I guess it's, it is still possible that uh, they were refueling in a, in a way that I couldn't actually get to see. But why would they, you know, it's not as if they were trying to hide it from me. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I try to argue about, um, there was a, a conversation going on on my post, and I was saying that uh, I thought, that the uh, potential energy in a compressed gas 
was you know so comparable to um you know the chemical energy in kerosene right but it turned out no that's not quite true it's right. like a, it's like a tenth of the uh of the you know, the amount of power or right. energy that's stored but I'm I'm thinking though, you know, do we need, you know, that much? That much? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. You know, this is just me, you know, like you sort of just yeah. making making stuff up. But <laughs> making stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> but if the thing has to be, you know, a jet engine has to be started with compressed air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the compressed air is blown into it, and it starts spinning up the uh, um, the the actual turbine at the front, drawing in more air and stuff. Okay, the air goes in to the center part. Most of the air goes around the outside, and that's the main thrust. But the, um, some of the air goes in the center, is compressed in a, a, a large amount, you know, really, really highly compressed. Right. And when you compress a, a gas, it heats up. Yeah. So it compresses to a, to a flash point. Now, there are two things you can do there. You can inject like a, um, a fuel vapor. Mm. Like uh, kerosene vapor, yeah, and the heat will um will make it explode, and you know it sort of can explode, but you know ignite and um and cause a, a bit of a jet, and which you know as it pulls through, it spins the rotor, it spins the turbine faster, and draws more air in, and so on and so on. Mm. Or you can actually put water vapor in. Yeah. Okay. If you if you sort of inject water vapor into um into sort of a, a superheated environment right the water vapor turns into flash it flashes into steam and expands rapidly and again you get you know a, a kind of jet exhaust out right so it's very possible that um we're doing it with water vapor right so yeah <laughs> that's definitely it. i need to sort this dog out i'm sorry okay. You, the, the comments are there though. Okay, let me uh, let me check any other questions. Um, I can't I can't see anything. What about aliens? Okay, so Blue Moon says, "What about aliens, demons versus uh, beings from another dimension?" Uh, okay, aliens and demons, beings from another dimension. Um, well. As far as I'm concerned, I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the Bible. I'm looking at uh, the Book of Enoch. Um, it says really clearly there that uh, um, demons are actually the uh, disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. You know, the offspring between um, humans and the, the fallen angels. Yeah. Yeah. When a Nephilim dies, then their spirits weren't meant to be here, so they're kind of trapped here. And they became the the evil spirits. They became known as all sorts of things, you yeah. know, throughout history. You know, um, fairies. You know, um, right. jinn, genies. Yeah, another jinn. You know, yeah, the jinn. They're, they've been they've had different names throughout all, all of history, and in different cultures, they've adapted them. You know, fairies were always dark, evil characters but you know disney takes it disney. turns it into some kind of a you know glorifying sorcery and yeah. glorifying you know all these kinds of things that's what they've been doing for for it's since their inception yeah. essentially so all these fairy tales yeah. all the um you know all these uh beings have been sort of uh all nicely nicified and prettified by disney they were actually very dark evil beings okay yeah. um now, when you find out that uh, Roswell, the, uh, the event that basically brought aliens into the public consciousness. Yeah, of course. Um, that, the people behind that were Jack Parsons and L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard. All right, of course. And that sort of gang of, uh, of Satanists mm. who were disciples of, um, of Aleister Crowley. Yeah. So then when you look at Alistair Crowley, of course. yeah, he's one of his books, he shows a picture of, uh, I think it's Lamb. Right, it's the big head, the big head, huge the eyes, tiny eyes you know. at the bottom of the skull, the first grey, basically. Right. Mm. Okay, so so it's no accident that, uh, you know, the disciples of Alistair Crowley, who um, was conjuring up these demons, mm. yeah, um, they did their own conjuring, and basically they rebranded these these dark spirits demonic spirits 
rebranded them as aliens. Mm -hmm. So no, we're we've now discovered that uh, you know this is a flat Earth. There's no space. There's no other worlds out there. Mm. Yeah, these aliens are literally the the rebranded demons and and fairies and jinn and all this this stuff that have always been here. So what do you say to the people who will say um, that? What about aliens from a continent we don't know about? Well, um, well, at this point we have no That's um, information, um, mm -hmm. but you know I don't discount that. Right. You know I don't discount. There's a there's a theory that says the uh, um, the Neph those Nephilim and fallen angels and stuff that are, are on these continents. But you know at this point we don't even know yeah. for sure that there are those yeah. continents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I personally think you know that. Uh, a thousand-year-old map from that was found in in Hawaii. You know the one with the continents around. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Okay, I personally think that's that's the model I'll go for. Right. You've okay. got the ice ring, and then more and then continents, more continents and then you've got the uh, the dome. Right. Okay. Um. So that's why I go for. But I've got no evidence of that. So yeah, you know, it's just speculation on my I, part. I'm more skeptical of that. Yeah. I, I'm more skeptical because I feel like these, you know. When you have, um, I don't think personally that it's just an opinion. I don't think there is any more um, land. Uh, I've I've read the book uh, Worlds Beyond the Poles. Obviously, I've listened to Richard Bird talk about another continent and all that. Um, but it's just the requirements. I know maybe I can't um, conceptualize it, um, but. The idea it would need a whole nother system because you know the sun is not operating over there uh you know and it would need its own set of celestial bodies that do not interfere with our own and mm -hmm. you know i just it's a it, it could be but i'm not seeing it personally myself but you know this convex earth documentary claims to have discovered the greater north continent uh, so uh, that'll come out hopefully, and I'll may you know I could possibly be wrong, and hope maybe they've done some research and actually gone to this place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I again <laughs> I, I doubt, doubt it, that. I doubt it, but, but you, know. you know, again, we're um, we're operating with very limited information. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new that's come out. You know, nobody has gone to the gone to the polls, and nobody's um, you know that I think that guy actually went up into in his rocket. Oh yeah, I heard it on recently. He's in hospital or something now. Like he's been hospitalized. Yeah, but he was putting that off for ages. I'm pretty sure it's because that was gonna happen. I mean, it's not it like it didn't look like he went up that high. To be honest, uh, right? You know, I didn't see the footage or anything. Uh, I, I saw, just saw, an I saw the footage. I saw right. the footage. He went up. Uh, the engine cut out not not too long into the flight. Right. Okay. And he apparently had a hard landing, and that's why he ended up in uh, in hospital. Right. But uh, there was I didn't get very much information from from the news story I saw. Um, yeah. But you know, there you go. There's no. But point I'm trying to make is that there's no new information that's come out that we can we can sort of leap on and uh, and analyze and dissect. Yeah. So. Yeah. That whole thing was kind of a ploy anyway, though, that rocket thing, because they ended up, the media outlets, at least when I was reading about it, ended up turning it about, this is about proving the flat Earth. This guy's going to go like 20,000 feet up and prove the flat Earth, even though that's, you know, obviously we go in planes higher than that when we, you and know, even though we've had uh, weather balloons, balloons up 120,000. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, it's what a, he was going to... I don't think that was the point of it, mm -hmm. but the media said, oh, he's doing it to point the flat, just because I had flat Earth on the side. So, like, it kind of got twisted in their eyes. And a guy like, called himself Mad Mike or something. Was, you know, <laughs> just It's just basically saying, I'm mad, you know? And, yeah, so I'm not sure... He's actually done any 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 sort of uh, benefit to the flat earth, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Got it out there, but how much does that mean? Um, Pucket O two O says, "I now know God." Dave turned me from atheism. Thank you. What Bible or scripture do you suggest? <clears throat> okay, uh, well, I'm really happy to hear that. Um, I I subscribe to the uh, the King James sixteen eleven. With the apocrypha, so um, you can you can. Uh, there's a version that basically takes the uh, the the real sixteen eleven and just make puts it in a clearer font so that you can you can actually understand it. Um, but uh, any translation is is going to be um, suspect, um, and and really, what I found is that um, 
by learning certain uh, rules of Paleo Hebrew. Um, you can look at the fake Hebrew, the Yiddish, use their tools to, um, to go and look at words. And then using the rules of Paleo Hebrew, the, the language that the Bible was originally written in, I say not Bible, the um, so called Old Testament, um, then you can apply the rules to the fake Hebrew and then get the full, um, you know, the full information about it. Something's gone weird. No, it's just, it's just gone behind okay, this for no it. reason. So. Okay. Yeah. So you can, you can, uh, you know, just do, sort of, uh, uh, get the the expanded meaning of the word um by looking at the uh the the fake hebrew and uh and decoding it as such yeah it's good to get strongs or you can use something like blue letter bible did you say that yeah, yeah blue letter blue bible, letter bible. Uh, i've got strongs but it's the same thing you know and um yeah just look at the um the modern hebrew the modern alphabet <clears throat> and just it's well it's, um, it's consonants yeah, yeah so the the rule one of the rules is uh, you know if you see a, a letter e well, it's mm -hmm. an A. Right, so yeah, sometimes yeah. they split words up by just changing an E and A to an E. And you look look at the uh, the fake Hebrew, the Yiddish, and you think it's two different words. But, you know, applying that rule, you can say, oh, actually, they're the same word. Mm -hmm. So you can put all the meanings together and then get a different sort of uh, uh, actual meaning for that word. Yeah, so it's just a question of uh, learning what the rules are about. Uh, and, and they're fairly simple. Like there aren't any vowels, you know, apart from the the R sound and maybe an I sound. But mm -hmm. um, so when you see a, a U or an O, yeah, you can you can actually substitute a couple of other words, um, uh, sorry, a couple of other letters, and then and then find out what you know what the real word means. Yeah. So that so that so the Yahusha, um, the Yeshua. The U's, there's no use. The U's shouldn't be there, really. Yeah. Um, and Yahweh, I mean, you know, it's not, yeah. there's no air sound. So, yeah. The closest thing, I believe, to Yahweh was actually King Jehu, what they call Jehu in the Bible, which would be Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahweh. You know, yeah. that's the closest you're going to get. But that was a Judean king. Yahweh. Yeah, that was the Judean king. So, mm -hmm. um, got lots of comments. Dave, don't get caught in the Bible trap. There's more to the game. All right. Wow. <laughs> well, what game are you talking about? You know, because um, as I said, the my my first video on the flat Earth was called the biggest lie of all, and underneath that was the uh, the even bigger lie, which is human history, and that human history is well is is basically tightly bound up with the uh, with the so called Bible. So, sorry, that's what it is. I agree with that. Um, thank you, Dave. By the way, red flag. What is up with FEMA and Walmart? Georgia Guidestones. Uh, well, I think it's now more than Walmart. I mean, we were actually just talking about this the other day, right? Um, the massive amount of store closures that are happening everywhere with everything. Like, I'm sure you heard about Toys R Us, but there are several other chains also that are shutting down. Um, so it's like it look it's looking like America and here because it's it's happening at uh, similarly in this country as well. But it's like close everything's shutting down. Soon that place is gonna be like a ghost town. What's gonna you know all the big big department stores are gonna be empty. We've seen what they're doing to the WalMarts. If you've if done the research into um, the connection between FEMA and Walmart and the military in Walmart and how Walmart actually own their own private force they have like their own militia um they've been turning those places into like internment camps like there's no other way to put it there's um you know fenced off sectioned off areas saying they're not being in use um you know police are being called on people who are going too far beyond a certain point um so i mean it, it's pretty obvious to me that they're they're you know all the stores are slowly shutting down they're they're turning them into some sort of holding areas um for whatever they've got coming next but we've seen this coming miles away like how how many years have we been talking about yeah i know but you know what well, I've, I've i've been thinking is the point is all these places like walmart mm -hmm. they were never meant to be shops yeah of course what who was it who made walmart sam uh because he uh, i forget what his name was is it sam 
Walsons. Ah, oh, I'm probably I butchering that. Don't know, but but the the you know the, the name Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Backwards. Marshall. Mar- 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 yeah, Mar- the guy Mar- the guy involved. One of the guys involved in Walmart used to work for the military in internment camps and prison camps. Right. So it's like it was. It's like somebody said, "Look, I've got an idea. We can we can build these camps." under everybody's nose if we just call them um super stores yeah yeah and yeah. when you if you go into a walmart you okay, can tell the place is massive yeah yeah, yeah yeah i mean you know way too massive yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean in england we we you know we've been to some super stores that we've got some super stores here but not to the scale yeah. no i mean the biggest superstore I've, I've been um in this country in in pitsy um is a is a is a tesco's Right. It's a, like a super Tesco's. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's massive, but a Walmart is like four times the size. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so so this has been this is like a, a plan from the big very beginning. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and yeah, the it's not just Walmart. It's it's other huge stores. You know that uh, um, are in strategic locations. Yeah, you know we're finding that these uh, some of these places. Well, most of these places are in the right place by a train line and uh you know but and it's it's like obvious that they've been, pl- been planning this from the very beginning mm-hmm. um now it just so happens that uh last year i, I went to america three times four, maybe four times and three of those times i was going in a in a um an rv um from texas to to california right. and what we were doing we were stopping at walmart's yeah um and because you could you're allowed to kind of stay overnight there right so um this is you know where i got to see all the the positions of these walmarts Mm -hmm. and uh and you know how big they are and what they they they're everywhere they're literally everywhere (laughs) yeah yeah. yeah. most towns you know we're going to the town like okay where's the walmart yeah (laughs) and we'd find it and, and go to it so they're everywhere so you know it's it's a it's a plan it's a plan mm-hmm. um and what we were saying i think we were we were back in america um in 2010. Mm-hmm. it was something like that right yeah 2010, 2010 we right. went back uh, for july 4th um and we went to uh paramus mall which is a uh, one of the biggest malls in new jersey mm-hmm. and it was a saturday and there was hardly anybody there yeah which was you know you know yeah like, from when we of. were there yeah it was like a it was, it was like a ghost mall and i've heard that there are lots of ghost malls over there so america is is shutting down it's mm. not going to be around for much longer it's um you know it's, it's like they've been keeping the lights on and uh you know trying to go through the motions but mm. it's it's being shut down because i think judgment is coming mm. um and they know it you know we're, we're hearing about the uh the CEOs of various companies just making, you know, disappearing, disappearing. Yeah. yeah, Disappearing. Maybe some of these uh, celebrity deaths aren't actually deaths. Yeah. They're going, coming out of the limelight and, uh, and, you know, running away to their little South American, you know, rat hole. Yeah. You know, so who knows? Well, this is what was a, it was a red flag to me. I think I talked about it in the video. It's like, you see all the people who are getting fired and leaving from the administration, mm-hmm. all these CEOs who are backing out all these big, you know, that are the, is it really, is that just theater or are these guys saying, you know what, <laughs> you know, like I, you know, it's time for me to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting, but you know, don't be afraid of that stuff. It's not necessary to be afraid of it. Yeah, it's a, a, f- a funny thing. I watched. Uh, I was reading a book called um, This Other Eden, and um, it was about uh, a coming ecological collapse. Yeah, yeah, go figure. Um, but it was the rich people um, buying these survival domes. Yeah, <laughs> where they could go actually lock themselves in. For, you know 50 or 100 years or something and it will provide everything they need yeah so all the rich people were buying them and getting them ready for this ecological collapse mm. and uh everyone was on tentacles there was all these uh stories in the news of ecological disasters and everything and everyone was waiting for this thing called the rat run yeah right when that day that um the uh the word is given and uh, everybody retreats to their domes and sets the timer on their domes so that keep them locked in. Right. And um, and it happened. It just like one day, you know, a couple of the elites just went in their domes and 
and everybody was like it's now it's now and uh the the idea that like uh, 100 years was was the right time they, they all dialed it in and overnight the whole of mankind or most of mankind or the elite mm. disappeared off the face of the earth mm. and the earth got better <laughs> yeah. it got better because you know mankind the most of mankind or the worst part of mankind disappeared yeah of course. and everybody who's left outside their lives got better and this is yeah. what I think is, uh, I think is what's actually coming. But yeah. there you go. That's another story. Whereas, uh, I'm sure I've read something before. I don't know if I lost it already. Um, it, it was somewhere up here. I might have to. Oh, yeah. Great to see you both. Dave is a huge imp inspiration. Thank you about the song that we are creating for the Most High. Is it possible to be written in Paleo Hebrew? Maybe English is not the best choice. I suggested this, but then um, you made a good point. It's a lot to ask. It is. Um, so one, to write it. Two, to get someone to, you know, be able to sing it properly. It's, it's, it is a lot to ask. Um, and, you know, we don't know that, like, know the tongue. Like, really know it enough yeah. to, you know, be creating you know it's still hidden to us uh so like we've really just got the language we know <laughs> well the way, the way i see it is that um uh as as black people you know we sing yeah you know um where it says in the bible that we would cry out to the most high i think we sung to him you know yeah. we sung because that's that's what we do i mean the know? greats wrote songs to the most high that's what they did right yeah, they wrote songs the whole of the whole of Psalms. Yeah, yeah that's what, Psalms the, the most Psalms. Moses wrote one as well in Exodus. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I, that's what I think. It's, uh, it's all about singing because we have this amazing voice. You know, mm -hmm. we have, I'm not just saying black people, I think everybody, this this voice thing mm -hmm. is much more sophisticated than, you know, the way we're using it at the moment. Yeah, you know? the power of sound is way more than right. what we're, I mean, you know. If you think about it, you can hear, hear a sound and replicate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you, you know the the people with uh, with a vocal range that's like absolutely incredible. You mm -hmm. know, you can shatter a glass. Some people can shatter a glass with their with their voices alone. Yeah. So, you know, these things are you know, these voices are much more sophisticated. If you ever heard um, Tibetan throat singing, I've heard of it. I can't remember it. You're gonna have to remind me. It's it's basically they're singing and they're, they're sort of singing with several different undertones and overtones right so they're making these sounds you know with their main voice but there's there's parts of it that are, are sort of higher frequencies right and, so it's like a layered it's yes. like a layered so they're singing like three different songs in one right wow. you know, just by, by modulating the, the you know their vocal cords i guess mm. um but it's incredible to listen to so so yeah i mean we've got these this sophisticated sophisticated equipment yeah. um and you know we're just using it for these small mouth noises yeah you know so um i i really think that it is about um us singing to the most high mm. and um i think it's the i think it's the energy the um the feelings that we we have when we when we sing it that's you know going to be the key yeah you know? um so you know we no, we, we don't know our original language, you know, yeah. and yes, it'd be great if we did, but um, I don't think that anybody actually really knows, no, of course not. you know, what the language is and, and how to absolutely properly um, pronounce it. Yeah. I think we're just doing the best we can with the uh, little knowledge that we have. No, I agree. I agree. That would be good nonetheless, though. Whatever, it would be. Whatever. It would be. No, I mean, it'll be good, you know. Oh, like, yeah, the song will this, be. This, this song will be good either way. And I've spoken to uh, a few people now that are writing songs and, uh, you know, they're really excited. And there's like a few songs being written. And, and it's, yeah, I'm really excited to, to find out what, what we're going to get. Okay, I'm just looking through these. A lot of people tell me to go back to their other <laughs> questions. It's just we're talking. I told lot. you, you're not you're not doing your job. <laughs> I'm trying to listen and I'm trying to read. Okay, you got to cut me some slack. <laughs> um, uh, what about friends that say this is from Young Achiever? What about friends that say uh, Bible, flat Earth, etc. Don't change their life okay that's to me that's like i don't know i, I i'm not sure it, i'm not sure 
if where I can go from there, if someone like if I explain it to someone and they no longer, you know, they're just like, well, you know, it doesn't matter to me because, you know, it's not going to affect my personal life. Uh, maybe you have a better way of approaching than me. I'm like, you know, well, uh, it, I mean, I can explain to you the reasons why. But if you don't, you know, if you're not seeing that or resonating with it at all and you're just too busy doing what you want to do all the time um, and, you know, it's too outside for you to internalize and, and we can't go any further with the conversation as far as I'm concerned. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the way I see it is that, you know, if you're, if you're searching for truth, if you find any truth out, okay, mm -hmm. it either impacts your life or then you haven't understood it properly yeah. or you're not, you know, it's, it's, it's not real to you. Yeah. Because if it's real truth, you're finding, you have to change your life. Yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's another thing. It's like some people just know, I think subconsciously at the very most that if they do accept some of these things that it, they've made all these plans for themselves and they've made, you know, they've got all this. Uh, no, let's don't, don't get involved in what I have going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a lot of that happening. Um, it's hard because I mean, you know, when I first started finding out truth, mm -hmm. essentially my, you know, my marriage ended, you know, mm -hmm. my world changed, Yeah. you know, and at every stage, cause I've been going bouncing from one topic to the next, to the next, mm -hmm. not because I've been looking for it. It's because when you find so out well. one, you know, one part of the jigsaw puzzle, you yeah. find other, other pieces on the end that lead somewhere else. Yeah. And it's like, okay, was well, that going to go? And you end up somewhere else looking at something else. Mm -hmm. And at every stage, when you find out some truth, your life has to change. Yeah. Otherwise it, it's meaningless. Yeah. So, you know, when I found out about um, urine therapy, for instance, yeah. Well, I couldn't just read it on a page and go, Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. And that changed my life completely. Um, flat earth changed my life completely yeah because um as i said i was an atheist for 40 years yeah, yeah. Well, it was the same for me me I, I i think i didn't really give it any real thought in terms of because whenever someone would ask me you know do you believe in god i think my old responses would be like um kind of agnostic new agey you know like it's a consciousness and we're all like i didn't really know you know mm -hmm. i hadn't really given it much time i think that was just something that filtered through to me through all you know social conditioning mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean flat earth is a big one because it does do that and it does that for a lot of people um where it's like well you know if if, if there's no other planets and there's just this what we have here under our feet and you know everything's close by and some someone's put this here you know yeah uh, and it can't be ignored but it also means that you know every single life here is sacred yeah even yeah. even the animals yeah mm -hmm. and you know we're eating them like crazy here yeah. you know we're actually we're actually enslaving animals so that we can eat them yeah you know so um you know that's the other thing i mean i was i became a vegetarian um you know on the way to um, fruitarian and stuff um before I, f I found out about flat earth right but i could have quite easily you know slipped in a you know a chicken wing or something or yeah. or but after finding the flat earth and realizing that we're in this enclosed system mm -hmm. yeah we are the chief creation of creation yeah we're put here to steward the earth not um dominate it the way that um you know it's been interpreted so far yeah that means that you know i personally think we shouldn't be eating animals so now i can't there is no way i can eat, eat an animal product right and we know uh, we know that we're not supposed to yeah there's a <laughs> I was watching this today. Maybe. There was, um, yeah, there was a there was a joke, <laughs> yeah. uh, a candid camera um, thing. You might have seen it, um, where in a supermarket, you know, there's a meat counter mm -hmm. and there's a like um, a sample dish with sausage in there. It was uh, like you know, very tasty sausage and stuff, and people were tasting it and said, "Oh, that's nice. I'll have some." So the guy goes, "Righto." And he goes and gets a live pig, piglet, yeah. and he puts it in a box, and somebody sort of picks it and it, and you know takes care of it. But but 
you know, he pretends to, to grind it up into sausage. Mm. And, you know, he, move, he turns the handle and sausage comes out and everyone is absolutely horrified. And, and you know, absolutely hates the idea and gets angry and all that. But that's what happens. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just they, because they don't see the process. In worse conditions, to be honest, yeah. Yeah, they don't see the process. Mm. So it's okay for them. Yeah. But once they see the process right in front of them, mm. right, then there's no way they can do it. It's just word magic that's going on in your head that substitutes animal for meat. Yeah. So meat is something else other than animal. Right. Yeah. But when you actually link them together, people can't can't eat it. I'm not sure I entirely agree. I'm not sure only because I'd say to in in this system, mm. the way it's done now on this mass scale, ridiculous, you know, greed, just putting it out most of it gets wasted anyway. Yeah, it's immoral on a on hugely immoral. But with the system taken away, where you know, I think you, it'd be possible to kill an animal to eat an animal. Okay, there's a dog Give, over there. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna kill <laughs> and eat my dog. You know what I'm saying? That's not <laughs> why. That's, that's, why? That's why is a dog? Gonna... Why is a dog protected and uh, a cow or a calf? If or... I, if I'm saying if I'm keeping cattle or I'm keeping, you know, I think I'd be able to do it. I think maybe I couldn't. Maybe it would come to it. I don't think I would... you could. <laughs> you don't think I got it in me? You ain't got it in me. <laughs> I think I could. I think I could do it. Um. I, I, but I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, definitely, because um, a hundred percent the separation between the process and the final package does lead people to consume. If every time they had to eat chicken, mm. they had to have a chicken killed in front of them or kill the chicken themselves, they're going to be eating a whole lot less chicken, at least. You know what I'm saying? At the very mm. least, a lot less. Uh, which is why I think you know, if you were to eat an animal, really, you should kill it yourself. If if <laughs> if you want to. Eating animals. I'm not saying people should be going out <laughs> finding animals to kill, but I'm saying like, um, if you were to eat it, you know. But this this uh, word magic works in other places as well. I mean, there's right. the same experiment or similar experiment where um, there are, there's a, a person giving samples out in the street of a, a new brand of milk, mm. and uh, people are tasting it, going, "Oh, yeah, this is uh, yeah slightly more creamy, and uh, yeah, it's very nice." And the the person says, "Yeah, it's dog milk." And people was like suddenly go, blah, 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 what are you, what are you doing? And they're getting angry and blah, you know, same thing. Mm -hmm. Why are you? Um, do you think it's okay to drink the the, the you know the um, breast secretions of a cow? No, I do not do not agree with milk at all. So. <laughs> the breast secretions of a dog or a, or you know a cat or whatever. Of course, yeah? social conditioning. Of course, right, I've... it's literally just a word magic. Mm -hmm has turned it into a product rather than, you know, the, the, the mammary secretions of a, another animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If y'all have not looked into milk, look into milk because that's just disgusting. It's, it's, it's it is, really just especially nasty. Especially now with all the, you know, the antibiotics and the mastitis and the pus and the blood and all that stuff. Yeah, it's not good. Now, I think we went way off the topic there. Yeah, yes. we probably did. <laughs> um, Koja, you should battle in Paleo Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, man. Like it would be cool, but that's just that's just not gonna happen. Um how many native people living off the land are vegan? I don't know. I don't know. Native people, native to Which, where? yeah, which native people do? I don't know. I'm gonna have to clarify I, that one. I don't really know. Um uh, let's see. Uh, any word from Neil deGrasse Tyson on the open letter? How would you see a debate playing out between you two? Uh, <laughs> I I would absolutely love to act, to sit down, face uh, you know across the table from Neil deGrasse Tyson, and just rip the guy apart. You know, simply <laughs> simply on the contradictions that he himself Does has everything. put out. Yeah? yeah. Um, the the one the the one um and I'm putting together because I'm doing a. a presentation at the um flat earth uk uh conference mm -hmm. in in a month um and 
Um, I'm not sure whether to keep it as debunking the debunkers or debunking Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Um, but one of the things is, uh, you know, he he says that, you know, you, you're too small on the earth to, to detect um, curvature. And even yeah. if you're in a plane, you can't see it because you're just too small and the earth's too large. All about that. scale. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I've got him saying, yes, you can see a, a boat going over the horizon, yeah. you know, and your horizon <laughs> is at three miles away. Yeah, yeah, so. so you're saying at ground level, you know, you you see a curvature three miles away, yet when you're in a plane, you can't see a curvature. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Hmm. Absolutely ridiculous. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was reading actually um, The Two Sciences by Galileo. Um, <laughs> in the beginning, uh, he actually says, um, there's, uh, this is like page 30, I believe in that book. And he's, um, saying no matter the scale, it is observable that, uh, shapes, uh, maintain the same physical properties that whether that be circles, squares, try the whole thing. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, then that means no matter what scale you make a sphere, it's going to curve away from you it doesn't matter how big the, the ball is mm -hmm. because it's still going to maintain the same property properties regardless of scale yeah so especially with elevation you're going to see the curving away from you you're going to see a bulge and the curve away right. from you not in every direction and yet it's never observable well that was one of the things in my um in the biggest live video mm -hmm. uh i did a i did a graphic of um the earth and the plane above the earth you know, yeah. and uh, saying, showing that the sight line from the plane would be going down to the, uh, the, the you know, the curve of the yeah. earth rather than out, you know, horizontally that we see, you know, we see the, we see the, uh, the horizon match our, uh, you know, come up to our eye level. So outside of the plane, it sh we should see it there. But, you know, when you look at the, the curve of the earth, we should see the horizon down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah I'm no, yeah. Up. No, no. Right. So, the thing that kept coming up was people, you know, and um, people saying, "Well, you've made the plane too big, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's too far far up, so so you you're not gonna." But it didn't matter. Every mm -hmm. time I drew it up in in AutoCAD, yeah, so I drew the the Earth as a circle, you know, exactly the right size, mm -hmm. and I put a plane at thirty five thousand feet, you know, seven miles up. Mm. And and yeah, and I drew the lines, and it was the same thing. It's good. It's good. It has to be the same thing because yeah. it's the same shape. Where exactly. like the 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 heliocentrists want you to believe that a, when a when a sphere or a circle, think of a circle, gets big enough, it starts flattening. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> the, what they want you to believe that it will eventually flatten out at, in portions, which is impossible. Mm. It's impossible. Yeah, somebody actually did a photograph of um, a basketball um had one of those you know that you can get like camera lens that uh is is like micro microscope lens so you can you know focus in on really tiny things um they they put that you know on, on the surface of a basketball mm -hmm. and it still was curving yeah. it's curving a lot yeah. you know so no yeah that's the ant on the basketball thing yeah yeah, yeah. Rubbish. someone brought it to me actually that one they, yeah. they, but they said ant on an orange which i guess is worse scale oh, worse scale, yeah. scale but um you are the expression of God, and if you need something to tell you who you are, then you don't truly understand yourself. What do you mean something? Are you talking about the scriptures? Okay. Uh, gonna have to be more specific <laughs> with our questions. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> veganism is an understandable response to the factory farming horrific thing, but in reality, humans are designed to thrive off meat and animal foods. Plants are optional and not essential. I would say plants are definitely essential. Yeah. Well, uh, my, my, my point of view is that no food is essential. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. I've, I've actually done the fruitarian thing, not as hardcore, but I did it for like 30 days and I actually had loads of energy, a ton of energy. I kind of stopped and went into because I was doing all sorts of martial arts and stuff and I thought I wanted to change my diet to match it and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I agree that, um, it, it does have its benefits, but I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> stick it out, like you stick it out. You know what I'm saying? Well, I did 60 days without eating. Um, you know, I'm. I want to actually uh, wanted to do a, a documentary about breatharianism and uh, basically lock myself in a room for for six months, um, and uh, you know, do a documentary around that. 
um, but that hasn't happened. The guy, the, the filmmaker, hasn't really come back to me on it. So, yeah, it might not happen. So, but yeah, I'd like to do that at some point. That's um, what we got. I'm having a little look. Uh, the ITRA says, why aren't you wearing an orange 33 hat also? An orange 33, 33 hat. Not sure what he means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's orange thirty three hat? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I really don't. Um, where is it? Flat Earth is the ultimate distraction from the slave masters who are really taking advantage of people. I don't know if it's a distraction. <laughs> I um, I, I would I would kind of agree because uh, uh, anything is a distraction. I guess okay? from yeah. If you get stuck in it, that. if you get stuck in it, yeah, it's a yeah. distraction. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. When yeah. you get stuck in it and you end up just kind of going in, you know. Um, so yeah, I can, I can relate to that. If you if you learn from from what you've what you've learned, yeah, yeah, then you can move on. You know, you can learn what you need to learn from it, and then move on to the next thing. Mm. Yeah, if you if you get stuck in one particular thing, then okay, that's it. It's it's distracting you from even bigger truths mm. you know even even more information about the the big picture because what we're kind of doing is uh it's like a big jigsaw puzzle yeah, yeah. so if you're in i don't know the free man movement you know you're over here you know putting your puzzle pieces together getting the idea of what's really going on with the legal system right if you're over here with the medical system yeah you're putting a piece of piece together you're here with the flat earth pieces together but there's a huge picture out there that's showing you or well, telling you a story, telling you what's really going on. Mm. OK, but if you get stuck in one one corner, you're not going to see the big picture. Of course. So I guess in that sense, it's true. I mean, um, not initially. It's not a distraction for people who are not new to it. This is why I say that flat earth activism stuff is great, because um, for the people who are completely unaware, it's not a distraction because it will lead them to where they need to be. I think like it's 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 the tip of the iceberg really but it is it leads people to the right direction yeah um you know and all, all of it i mean the the health stuff yeah it's great to learn what um you know how to how to make yourself healthy but if you're again if you're stuck there mm -hmm. right then you don't see where the health part fits into the picture right and um you know and it's all interlocked it's all interlocked so um so yeah you, you just got to keep moving you learn what you need to learn from it move on mm -hmm. you know i know the earth's flat yeah i i don't know the details the map might be a bit hazy you know the, there are a few problems that we haven't figured out because we're dealing with people just, who are much people. smarter yeah, yeah you know the, the the people who are behind this have you know had figured out ways to trick us that we we can't even imagine at this point mm -hmm. yeah so you know, I'm I'm not I'm not really that interested in finding out, you know, how they're doing it, you know, how the magician is doing their tricks. Yeah. I just need to know that there's, there's a, a trick. trick being done. Yeah, this is what I try and say when people <clears throat> say about um they're always their question is always, Oh, why would this be happening? Why would this be happening? It's like, look, although we could postulate motives all day long, the main point is that it's happening, you know? Like um, what was it? I think Dell from beyond the imaginary curve, he said something good. He's like, if uh, two detectives walk onto a homicide, they see two bullet holes in the victim, and they say, "What? Well, I can't see the motive here. I guess there wasn't a murder. <laughs> you know? It's not about that. It's about then investigating mm -hmm. uh, and then finding more out for yourself. It's not about the motive. for It's about realizing that something is going on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a good question was here. Oh, did I lose it? I had a very... Oh, I had it. I think it was a good question. It was about the scriptures, actually. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, reconciliation says, uh, why was Abel's sacrifice of lamb more pleasing to God than Cain's fruits of the land? Uh, you're going to have to ask the most high about that. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. I don't that, know. That's, I a, a good, that's what I think is um, a good question. I, have, I, I can tell you. The, the thing is, uh, you know, we've, we've only got um, the amount of, of the so-called old testament that the romans allowed us to have yeah mm -hmm. 
there are many other books. There's there's a whole library down under the Vatican that uh, we're not allowed to see. Mm. Yeah, they put together the Old Testament for you know in that in that particular way for a reason. Yeah, to hide certain things so that another narrative can be overlaid on it. Yeah, I believe that there's um, you know, they 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 can't actually change the words. Yeah, yeah. They can't actually change the intent, but um, you know they can they can sort of play with it. They can mistranslate it. That was the big thing. You know they can put it in a different language and then play with that. Yeah, you yeah. see loads of examples of playing with translation. Was that verse in Psalms, um, where in the King James and a couple other versions it'll read because um, people will always point to it. I can't remember the chapter and verse, but they'll always point to it where it's talking about. Um, um, they uh, pierced my hands and my feet, uh, and they say it's about the crucifixion. It's about the crucifixion because it's the only thing that's kind of relevant. Um, but when you look at any Tanakh, or you look at the non-Christianized version, or you look into the Strong's, the word they use for pierced is lion. Mm. It can mean also digging. Lion, and so they took digging, thought digging could maybe pierce ish just down. So, you know, <laughs> so they kind of, you know, the way they play with it sometimes to try and make it sound like something that it's not. Or when they, you know, they translated um, Alma as young, which is in, in Paleo Hebrew, is young woman, mm -hmm. and they translated it in Greek to, to virgin. mean virgin. Virgin, yeah. So all of a sudden now you've got, um, you know, a virgin shall give birth. That's a big event. Yeah. But, it, you know, in, in the original language, it's a young woman gives birth. That's not, it's not a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, um, so yeah, that's, they, they can play with the, with the scriptures by, you know, messing around with the translation. Uh, you know, it says, do not take away, do not add to it. But that's what they've done. They've yeah. taken away books. They've added a whole set of books on yeah. top, and um, and and just messed around with it. But the way I the way I see it is that um, the Most High um, put that made sure that that book stayed with us. It's it's the book that's been with us for the whole of recorded history. I can't remember. Yeah, of course. I can't remember if it was in Isaiah where he, um, the Most High, has literally said, uh, the saith the Most High, his word will stand forever. You know, he's been, so it's basically car carved it out. Uh, so it's not going anywhere, but they have to dress it up in loads of stuff to take the actual message away. Yeah. Uh, which it, they've done pretty successfully. And it says in, uh, in First Maccabees uh, 348, it says, um, that they laid open the book of the law and sought to paint their own images in it. And this is what they've done. The Romans have done. They've um, opened the book and, you know, added themselves in it. And, and that's, that's a new Testament. Mm. And one big question I've got about that is who gave the Romans the right to decide which books went in? Yeah. You know, Romans who were the enemies of the Israelites. Yeah. Yeah. The Romans that the Most High never, ever spoke to, had no reason to speak to, didn't want to speak to. Mm. Yeah. Somehow they've been given the authority to decide what is the Most High's word and what isn't. Mm. Yeah. So how does that work? <laughs> yeah. yeah it just, yeah, it doesn't drive them. It's you know? all messed up. Mm -hmm. It's all messed up. Uh, D. Murphy, do you think the all meat diet? Is the way to eat? I can probably answer that for you. I don't think it, I think it's maybe the opposite of that one. Um, yeah, we'll just have a look at some of the guys in Texas. Yeah, um, you know, some huge people I, I saw over there. Yeah, I mean, seriously huge. Mm. You know, um, that's all the uh, the growth hormones and you mm. know the thing about the thing about eating meat. Okay, there are. Cultures who would um, who would you know kill a lion and they would eat the heart of the lion to take on some of the attributes of the lion. Yeah, this is yeah I know where right? you're going. Yeah, and in in this culture, when somebody gets a transplant, you know, an organ transplant, okay, it's it's a fact that people start to take on the attributes and even memories of the person who donated the, the, the organ. So yeah. somebody who was a pianist that, you know, dies and donates an organ and the, the person who gets it suddenly starts wanting to play the piano. 
mm. you know, or has memories about places and, and things like that. They've taken on some of the attributes of that person. Yeah. So think about the, the, the meat that people have been allowed to eat. Well, they say the life... They say the life is in the blood. It's in the blood, yeah. So, but this is why blood is is not allowed. You know, it's not something that you're meant to internalize. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and I do mm -hmm. agree with you, which is why some animals are, you know, off limits, such as, you know, like you shouldn't be eating pork because, you know, a pig's face is in the dirt all day. You know, you're taking on the attributes of that, you know. But, but, no, there's just the, the, the um, almost the emotional, spiritual aspect attributes of the animal in so the time think of, about it chickens, in the time of death yeah chickens mm -hmm. you know pigs mm -hmm. sheep yeah. cows yeah, yeah yeah what what sort of attributes are you taking on board when you consume those yeah? Yeah. you're taking on you're being like a a, a subdued cow-like sheep mm. <laughs> chicken yeah, yeah cowardly you know um i don't think it's an accident the the um, the, the choices of meat we've been given, you know, you know, the, the, what what is telling us that you know we we should eat um, uh, beef rather than antelope, or you know, why aren't we f um, farming lions? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And there's a reason. You know, there's these animals that um, we're taking on the attributes of, uh, of of those, you know, subdued animals. Mm. That's the way I think of it, anyway. Um, fish have no souls. How do you know? <laughs> very, very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if fish have souls. I do eat fish though, um, occasionally. You know what? I, I, used, um, the, that was the last thing I'd, uh, I stopped eating actually. Um, and I decided to give it up because, you know, I'm, I'm not eating any other animals. So why am I still eating fish? So I stopped eating fish. And guess what? After after a couple of weeks, it was like, you know what? I don't really want to eat fish. And I started getting sick, you know, when my mum would uh, we would have to go to the fish market for her. And it was like, oh, the smell of the fish was like, it just made me ill. So, you know what? No, it's not as easy. I did now. I did a lot of time off it. I don't, I because I went vegetarian, then I was vegan. Then I was, so it was like 90 days I didn't eat any fish, any meat. I still haven't really been eating meat, just fish. Um, and like, I don't know, cause I would, I would have no problem being sat, you know, fishing and taking home fish and like that to me is, I don't see any problem with that. Like, um, okay. and I would much rather be catching fish than killing any other animal if it, if it came to it. Like I wouldn't eat anything. I don't think really that I wouldn't be able to, you know, do myself. Cause then I'd feel like. <laughs> uh, I've, I've not seen you in the back there descaling and uh, and gutting a fish out there. No, but I, I would do it. I would okay. do it if it came to it. If I if if I was able to do anything here where I am, which I'm not. Well, the, the way I see it is, I don't need to eat it. Yeah, I don't need to um, to kill an animal to eat. You know, I I'm quite happy eating fruit. I'm quite happy um, um, eating the occasional occasional bit of veggie and uh, you know. Um, the occasional bag of chips, yeah, and, and Chinese. I've been eating like no Chinese <laughs> yeah. since I've been here. Good grief! I'm, I, can't, I can't wait to go back back down south to uh, detox, detox the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll have to. It's not good that stuff. Uh, well, Fe Viking says, "What's your thoughts on Rh negative blood types?" <clears throat> okay, this is where I Touchy. start pissing people off here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> well, the uh, the scientists basically say that uh, there's no explanation. It's a, a mutation of unknown origin. But again, when you tie it into the stories in the in the Old Testament, right there there was an incursion of something foreign, mm. and this is what Rh negative is. It's something foreign to this earth. Uh, no other animal has Rh negative blood, mm. and only fifteen percent of of humanity has it right yeah so where did it come from so you know the the uh the book of remembrance basically says that the it was the fallen angels that mixed their dna with humans and those the original offspring were very very different mm. from uh, from you know humans and i i think personally i think that some of them actually look like the alien from aliens right 
Yeah, yeah you know the the hr guy oh, oh yeah well one. we yeah we mm. see those skulls right we've seen those kind of yes that's the thing we've Whoa, seen the, the the extended skulls of these things yeah. and uh um and i think as they mixed with mixed more of humanity you know the skulls got you know shorter and shorter and they became more and more human-like mm. but um i'm i'm saying that the rh negative blood came from that union with the you know humans and and these these fallen angels mm. um we know that the royal family or there is only one royal family yeah um, they're all rh negative you know yeah. because uh, prince charles gave blood and uh i can't remember what it was but it was it was rh negative so it's a you know good bet that uh, that whole family is rh negative mm -hmm. um you know the the whole of uh what hitler was doing yeah. was actually trying to uh distill out the human and create the ubermensch the superman yeah by you know we know that the um the fallen angel seed was blonde. giants yeah. yeah giants blonde blue eyed yeah right um, so yeah. so literally hitler was was having was creating huge brothels of of women who were blonde and blue eyed and uh and like you know stud farming with a uh, blonde blue eyed uh, german blokes and just to try and distill out the human <laughs> that was th and that didn't stop with the end of the war because you know the the scientists who were, who were doing it we just went over to yeah, america and yeah. carried it on you know the whole thing was was it was eugenics yeah. it's called eugenics now um i can't remember what it was called in uh was it liebensborn or something in in germany it was called something else but in america it was eugenics and while hitler was doing his thing america was doing their own version of eugenics you know just sterilizing people you know forcibly yeah and uh you know so so yeah it never stopped it's still going on today or even the uh uh alien abduction thing right we know it's not aliens yeah of course yeah yeah so the alien abduction thing is the same thing that's been going on throughout human history yeah it's been all the way it's always been about reproduction so it's about impregnating you know people and taking their babies and and it's it's about creating um i believe it's about creating host bodies for for these uh these spirits mm. so yeah going off well i mean that could that could go <clears throat> to delve even further into the whole synthetics uh you know cloning type conversation um here let's see um the New World Order loves veganism, uh, a long-term diet which causes infertility and weakness and health issues. It uh, certainly doesn't do that. It might be that uh, eating GMO um, fruits and vegetables will do that, but uh, natural fruits and veg, well, natural fruits definitely won't do that. Mm. You know, um, it's the fruit is the least damaging of all um all the things you can possibly put in in into your mouth um so i don't know what they're what he's talking about really unless he's got um some information that i'm not aware of red flag have you seen star in the jar experiments i haven't seen star in the jar experiments you know what they are you probably do yes um <laughs> it's ultrasonic um ultrasonic waves uh um causing something oh right cavitation. yeah yeah and then you see the like it's like a light yes. kind of forms it's like sonoluminescence that's it that's right exactly it. right so when a when a, um, a bubble is formed by ultrasonic and um, sound waves into a, into a canister mm -hmm. yeah um when that bubble expands and then collapses it it, it sort of releases photons mm. and, and literally with the with the right frequencies you can actually keep that uh, that bubble expanding and collapsing and uh and it's like a star mini yeah. star and that's probably what is actually going on you know some some form of sonar luminescence up in the up in the heavens all oh, right I've got ask dave what he thinks about the new reveal of the giants enough talked about as tall as two miles tall the petrified world in the mountains 
landmarks made of their body parts or footprints. So, like the, I'm guessing it's like the ancient trees. It's a uh, giant stone petrified trees. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna gonna be an, um, attacked for this. I think. You know what? When that first came out, um, I realized that the you know I watched I watched it all. Um, I watched two versions of it. One in the guy, the original guy's uh, Russian guy's voice, and then somebody um, dubbed it over in English. You know, mm -hmm. I watched the whole thing twice and uh, and started looking into it, and it was like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what is the point? Okay, there isn't anybody sitting there, you know, saying, ah, we got them. You know, they think they they think these mountains are um, are actually mountains. <laughs> no, nobody's doing that. Nobody's trying to hide this. Mm -hmm. You know. And and what is the point? How does it affect your life? Uh, I know we just talked about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of different. The context is a little different, though, because what does it do? Like, if we had, even if we had, you know, conclusive proof, which there isn't really, like, so and, what? Yeah, it was it's still... somebody somebody lied to you. Well, we already know that. Yeah, <laughs> we already know that people are lying to us. Yeah, so so it doesn't add anything to to your life. It doesn't add anything to your understanding of the world you know it doesn't matter if if you know they were well that's that's going crazy because i'm saying they're not petrified trees they might look like like it one particular mountain mm. right? it's just it literally it's all around one particular mountain you know the uh um devil's tower in wyoming well there's and, a few of them to be fair there's a few of them i know like... but come on i mean it, you know, even if it was true, it doesn't help you. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't give you anything. It doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't enrich your life in any way. You know, it's it's interesting to interesting ponder. Interesting, yeah, to but, ponder. But, but if you're gonna spend um, hours and hours chasing petrified trees, you know, or or um, the giant thing, it was, mm -hmm. it was funny because I I made a I made a meme um, which was. Uh, the um what are those cards the illuminati, the illuminati cards. card game yeah, i made yeah. a, a, a petrified tree illuminati card <laughs> yeah. yeah taking the piss out of the whole thing um and i was going to you know i was going i was in turkey and i was going to take a picture of uh, um some of the mountains there that looked like a little bit like somebody lying down you know yeah and I was I told my mum, well, I'm going to take this picture and just make a little joke about it. no, there's there's a petrified man lying there, you know. But and I didn't I didn't get round to it. But right. um, but now people are doing that, you know. It's right. like oh, for crying out loud, um, you know the the shape of it of the the face of this thing I was going to take a picture of. Well, it was actually just trees. It wasn't the the underlying rock or anything. It was just the trees that were making it. Right. Yeah. If uh, if like all the trees were gone, then I, you wouldn't see a, a face. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're doing this um, thing about anthropom and I can never say that one and anthropomorphizing. You know, I when, don't even know. What that means. Let you, me sort this dog out. Keep talking. I'm when you here. actually look at um, when you see shapes, right? The human brain is really good at, uh, at, at seeing faces in. You know, in anything, you you know, you look at some clouds. You look clouds long enough, you'll see you'll see a face. You know, and you can look at random shit patterns and stuff, and you'll see faces in it. And that's that's what we do as humans. Yeah. So, um, I'm just saying that's what it is. And yeah, I know there were giants. Yeah, the the titans, the first generation of giants, were 450 foot tall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they wouldn't be tall enough. To they be, still wouldn't be tall yeah, enough to, to be chopping down um, Devil's Tower. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah, because the that put into a tree is just you know, the yeah, the scale is un incomprehensible. And then you try and scale down, scale up the uh, scale the the root system that for that tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there there isn't enough earth. Literally, there isn't enough earth on the the underlying rock. To support a tree of that size, right? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Of course, because it's the root system. Um, yeah, it's just take. Yeah. Yeah. The... So if you had that, if you extended the Devil's Tower out to a full tree, mm -hmm. yeah, you've got to understand that the root system is about the same size as the actual tree. Yeah. 
yeah so there isn't enough actual earth earth is is essentially you know um living material living matter that's accreted you know just just layer than upon layer mm -hmm. yeah there isn't literally there isn't enough to support a tree mm. it so, would take a lot <laughs> it would take a lot for yeah. a tree that size um vegan equals nwo slave diet facts okay cool all right whatever i <laughs> don't know what what's the new world orders like well, diet? It's, it's funny that you know there's a lot of uh, of truthers out there that you know don't eat meat and don't you know so somehow they are ahead of the game as far as uh, all the muggles out there you know eating you know meat all you know three times a day or something yeah yeah, yeah and still still asleep somehow you know the uh, the majority of uh, of the woken people you know have decided not to eat meat mm. you know I, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but yeah, to no. me, it mean I think it means that uh, it's not a slave diet. It's not a diet that's uh, injurious to to you. I yeah. think it's uh, I think it's a diet that actually um, basically opens up your intuition because the least the less you put down in your in your gut, the more the gut can think. Mm -hmm. You know, you, that's where you get your gut instinct from. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's how it works when you're if you're eating all constantly yeah filling it up and making it work really hard it can't think and they've discovered that there's brain cells in your gut right I didn't know about the brain cells in the gut thing. there's brains it doesn't they don't think in the same way as your your brain thinks mm. but um but you know you it thinks in intuition and I found this when I was um, doing the birthday experiment on the first 10 days when I wasn't actually drinking either. Um, my intuition went right through the roof. I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning and lying there for four hours, just having ideas and, and uh, you know, making connections and, and stuff. It was just amazing. I ended up having to have a notebook by my bed so I could just write stuff down. So it's too much coming. That's out. basically like it was basically like a long fast, a very long fast. Yeah, which uh, explains it makes sense to me why you would have all those kind of ideas because you know we see all throughout scripture you know when people had those long fasts and mm -hmm. you know made supplication and they came out you know it changed like it was a way to kind of come back to something. Fasting was important somehow. It, yeah, it, so I, I I can understand that. Um, Gerard Nevin says, Dave, you woke me up to flat earth. The biggest lie I ever told was the first video I seen. Uh, urine therapy has also cured my depression. I would like to take this chance to thank you wholeheartedly. Well, um, yeah, I'm just doing what I'm called to do. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out for you and I'm, I'm happy to help. Michael Bennett says, I worked as a nuclear electrician. Nuclear weapons may be a huge lie. Uh, I have always wondered about that one fear provoke to keep the people afraid. Um, yeah, I don't believe nuclear weapons are a real thing, <clears throat> personally. Yeah, nor do I. Um, back in 2012, mm. I don't know, it's actually 2011, there was a, a group of us um, who used to meet up on Skype and, and have a chat. Mm. And uh, one of the guys, was his, his name is Shaziz, um, he he was away for a few weeks and he came back and uh, we said oh where have you been he said oh I've just come back from Hiroshima and we're like what <laughs> you were you you had a holiday in a nuclear wasteland mm. you know he said no it's a it's a thriving city it's what you know it's amazing there's no there's no radiation I was like but it was supposed to be like a wasteland for ten thousand years yeah you know. And he said, no, nobody's sick. It's a, it's a great place. Just look at the comparison photos, I mean, of then and now. And it's like, you know, it's, it's just a thriving place. You know, yeah. there's no there's no issues there at all. So I started looking into it and um, I found somebody called Galen Windsor. And he was a nuclear engineer from the, the very start of the nuclear age. Yeah. yeah. He actually designed some of the uh, nuclear power stations. And he's he went on a a tour around america this, saying this is the guy who was like holding stuff and like eating it eating uranium yeah eating uranium. yes yeah. he would go around he would be telling people it's a lie 
you know we were swimming in the containment tanks and uh we were walking around carrying two um uh like lumps of plutonium like homer yeah. simpson style yeah and they he said as long as you you kept them apart yeah they were fine as soon as you brought them together in and made critical mass they would there would be a huge blue flash right okay. yeah but you just kept them apart put them in in two different pockets and you'd walk around yeah he and as i said he would eat uranium on stage just to show that there's nothing nothing dangerous about it um, he was saying that in they were doing all this stuff, and then one day, um, somebody from the government came along and said, "Oh, you have to wear these dosimeters, these dose, these like uh, badges that showed you how much of a dose radio, you know, radiation dose you've received." Mm. They were like, "What? Well, why?" And they said, "Well, no, you're going to have to do this now, and you're going to have to limit your dosage." And they were like, "Well, we've been we've been doing this for years. What are all you right. talking about?" And anybody who disagreed got fired straight away. So everybody started wearing these things and limiting their dose, and uh, and that's how it it sort of started, you know, um, coming in. It was the new people who came in were just told you've got to limit your dose, and, yeah. and so they they were scared and they were making sure they were and and, and just parroting what they're told. The reason they have to do that for you know yeah. they don't know it because they've never experienced it because they've been told not to experience it because. It's, yeah, and when we talk it, we were talking about this the other day with the experiment. Remember the experiment where, um, okay, the the people there was like you're going for a job interview and there are three people sitting there and a bell would ring, a bell would ring, and they these three people who were in on it would stand up. Yeah, and it was a social experiment to see if the person would comply. Yeah, so that person would sometimes like look and and they would start standing up and the bell would ring again and sit down. So would sit down. And then they get somebody else who'll come in who doesn't know what's going on. And he would usually stand up and sit down as well. Mm. And then eventually they'll get rid of the original three who are in on it. Yeah. And you'll have a whole seat full of uh, people who are standing up and sitting down have no and have no idea why <laughs> they're doing it. Yeah. 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 And it's the same thing. You know, the new people come in and they're saying, oh, you've got to wear this dos dosimeter and you've got to make sure you don't ever get into the red and, you know, and, and so they just they just believe the whole thing yeah. and believe the danger. So so yeah. Um, once I found out about um, Galen Windsor, I I started looking at Chernobyl. And it turns out that you know again it's another thriving place. All the wildlife because there's no humans in that place anymore. All the wildlife has gone in over. there and taken over, and they're thriving. But there was also a whole group of um, old women who just did not want to move when they they live in the hot zone yeah, yeah. and uh, the government said oh you've got to move it's dangerous they said no we're not moving and they stayed there and nothing nothing wrong at all they're fine yeah. and when you look further into it you find it was something like 15 people did of uh, of something and they attributed it to radiation right and everybody else who apparently got radiation sickness was cured right so yeah it's uh, it's all it's all bullshit and they've been holding this nuclear thing over over us for generations now and scaring people i remember in the 80s there were uh, there was this um nuclear war threat between russia and america and, yeah, and england point. and everything and and there was there was a, a tv show not a tv show it was um a cartoon film right um and it was uh, an animated thing about this old couple in this house and uh you know the new the, the war started and they were they were like hiding under their table with their sheets and over it and, and everything and and this film was showing um how they were deteriorating because of radiation sickness right and it, i remember it scaring the pants off me. <laughs> of course yeah yeah and there was all these so yeah they've been they've been holding it over us with you know using the fear to to you know, keep us keep us compliant and it's worked it's, it's been it's been amazing it's worked excellently it scared a lot of people i i i postulated that they were just doing it to like perhaps cover up for judgment when it happens you know if if judgment like that's just obviously completely out of my head you know but like um to cover up for if they're a massive act of god 
and they say, well, you know, a nuke's gone off in wherever. Sure, they they can hide stuff with that, but you know what? We've we've now associated a mushroom cloud with a with a nuclear explosion. Yeah. But any um, large enough explosion will we'll create, create a mushroom. Yeah. Cloud. Like, have you ever seen those neutron bombs? They do they do a similar thing. Big big uh, sonic boom and a, a mushroom cloud. And and of course, when you go back and look at the videos of. Uh, you know the these explosions. What, the like, nuclear tests. Yeah, the nuclear tests. <laughs> it's like yeah, they were designed for people back in the sixties. Yeah, you know, they the fifties and whatever. And it just doesn't cut it now. It's like hang on. <laughs> a second. That is a very good point. It's like um, it's like uh, going back and watching the moon landing now. If you go back and watch, I, I encourage anyone who's skeptical to go back and watch those old nuclear tests. And you will find several problems with them, and you'll probably just laugh watching them because it's, it's it's a joke. It really is a joke. But they scared the pants off the people in the back in the fifties and stuff. So, you know, it worked. It worked beautifully for them. So this guy's like a dedicated troll. I see him all the time. He's on my page too. It doesn't matter. Um, Dave, have you ever thought of live streaming experiments to prove the world is a flat plane? I don't think it's necessary. What does, he, what does he want him to live stream? <laughs> yeah, what? What do I do? I take take the camera down the beach and like, yeah, look, it's flat. See, <laughs> there you go. I can do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think that's necessary <laughs> to be honest. Um, all right. Uh, I remember the ads. Open minds. Uh, open my eyes. Says I remember the ads about nuclear war, scary shit. Now we enter Cold War too. Yeah, well, they're doing this. They we've been in the Cold War for some time. They've been hanging North Korea over you. Then they'll hang Russia over you. Iran. Yeah, Iran. Yeah, as well. They're just hanging them above you. They, they, it's been in the works forever. Like, yeah, yeah, we've been in that Cold War for a time. Um, D Murphy twenty three. Dead Reckner says, can you comment on the jet fuel hoax? We've actually, if you go back and listen, we've spoken about that in some depth. Um, the earth isn't flat. Haven't you guys ever seen a mountain? Yeah, okay. Oh, good grief. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A mountain? What? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's destroyed the whole thing. Oh, no, we didn't think about mountains. Oh. Yeah, mountains. Oh, and valleys, jeez, valleys. Oh, valleys oh no! Sheesh. <laughs> Man, we should have thought about this. I know. We should have I'm going to take all my content down yeah, now. I'm going to delete that. my channel. Um, Google vegan health issues. Okay, you're saying there's health issues. I mean, there's health issues with everything. Okay? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of um, foods that vegans eat. Right? It isn't good. You know, a lot of them still eat soy for gold. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They're because there's loads of those replacements for things, right? And I think those are just as bad. I never even when when I did my vegan thing, it was like, what is the point of me getting a fake sausage? You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. what, what is the point of this? I obviously that that stuff will be just as bad for you. I even drank. I was drinking almond milk instead of milk. Like, but like, I don't really know. You know, like I don't really know what it is. No. Uh, so I I had to leave that. Um, yeah, but you know, if you go to if you go to a fruit diet and drink distilled water, yeah, doesn't <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you don't you don't feel any negative effects. You only feel positive ones. And you know, rather than going with what doctors tell you, and they'll say, you know, your 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 blood sugar is this, and it's wrong, and your your uh, cholesterol level. <gasps> no, no, <laughs> yeah. you know, what do you feel it? Do you feel bad? Do you feel good or strong or what, you know? Yeah, use your own senses first. Use that's your what own you senses. should always be doing. But that, that, that's what all of this has always been about from the very beginning is taking you away from your – it is literally nonsense. <laughs> what you're taught is yeah. nonsense mm -hmm. because it's stripping you of your senses and telling you you can't trust your senses at all because it's always the opposite of your senses. That's what the globe does. That's, that's what this whole system of, of indoctrination is about, removing you from – Realizing that there are some things that you do know intuitively that you don't have to read a book and memorize to understand, uh, but they've made you just totally abandon your common sense and supplement it with uh, philosophy from several other people that they propped up as geniuses and all these kinds of things. Well, the, the thing is, when um, when I um, when I help people, um, I usually ask them a whole bunch of questions and. Uh, you know, and then sort of give them a, a, a little plan to follow. Mm. And what, two of the questions I give them is, uh, what's the diagnosis? Mm. 
and what what symptoms you're experiencing okay so a lot of times I've, I've people have said that they've been given a diagnosis of something and but they've got no symptoms or they didn't have any symptoms they went into the doctor with uh, with a headache or something mm. and I'm just a, as an example and the doctor said oh you've got this and that and the other yeah and, and then... I said, oh okay uh, but do you have all the symptoms for the first things no I had a headache yeah, yeah. but the doctors convinced them that they, they've got this that and the other mm. and then given them pills yeah and and when you look at the 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 side effects of these pills you'll find that they the side effects Create are the symptoms. the symptoms that the, the, the pill is to try and, is trying to get rid of these guys man but this is the thing I it's, it's it's a sad state of affairs but these doctors have become drug pushers that's what they are this is just drug dealers <laughs> like that's what they become uh they 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 have the person that they have to serve and it's the state it's no longer the people you know and but th that also is not necessarily they may not necessarily be conscious of that because of what they're taught in those years they sacrificed their life to in the, you know medical school well you know it's it goes a bit further than that because um most of us have been sold a fantasy about the work that we we do you know we start a job thinking that we're doing one thing and we end up doing something else you know uh, somebody who really wants to help people and and uh, you know um uphold the law and uh, and and you know all that good stuff mm -hmm. yeah protect and serve you know they end up being thugs and um and tax collectors yeah that's what they are they they used to be tax collectors and they you know they're, yeah, they're, they're now they're now in for you know murderous enforcers yeah now. yeah they're, they're they're awful i see footage after footage of all types of people they just, they just like it, especially in the states where it's like um a situation is calm until they arrive yeah they're, they're the whole point of them is to you know settle keep order right and yet everything is calm, everything is good. They show up, people are on the floor, people are getting thrown to the wall, screaming, it's crying. You know, like the, you can see who the problem is in these situations. And yeah. it's, it's just, it's horrible. And it's getting worse. It is getting worse. And yet you still have those same people uh, sat there going, well, if you just uh, didn't resist and you didn't, <laughs> how many times you have to be shown the same scenario over and over again um, of just, total recklessness and abuse of power from an obvious abuse of power from people who should really be like you see you people who should be really suffering a higher punishment for breaking the law yeah. are the ones who get a pass the ones who really should be under more scrutiny are yeah. the ones who are under less like yeah. it's just totally backwards yeah i mean nothing nothing's more obvious than that one where it was a it was a guy who was coming out of a hotel um a hotel room mm. yeah and the guy uh, the cop with the ar15 yeah mm. um was giving him conflicting orders he was lying on the floor hands behind his head and he's saying put your hands out in front of you and and sit up and don't, no don't get down and and the guy was like what what should i do and and eventually the guy just the, the cop oh, was just in a hotel lobby a hotel, i saw yes. that and that was like execution yeah and that was saying, an execution saying, get up no turn out to, yeah and, and the guy was like what what should, what do you want yeah. me to do and, and just killed just him. yeah it was that was just that was disgusting that was like they're all disgusting really yeah um, um that's the only thing that still angers me uh, it's the only thing yeah. that gets me angry mm. watching somebody uh, abuse their their position and and you know oppress uh, a weaker person but the thing is the, the thing about it is they're not actually abusing their power they're doing exactly what it is they're supposed to be doing right which that's that's the main problem yeah but uh you know what um i keep saying this is probably going to be the end of me if it if something like that happens in front of me yeah i, I, I well, cannot stand by and I'm let it happen i'm and the same so that's probably how i'm going to end you know? yeah yeah, I'm no, I'm in the same boat. There's I might no have to let you hold this because I might have to uh, fill this up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill it up a minute. I might even bring it back. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go through some of this. Stop talking about answer some darn questions, please. Sorry, we go off on you know, like we have certain questions and uh, you know, we have to answer them in depth, and then it adds to other things. 
Dave, have you heard about the cosmic egg? What are your thoughts about this theory? This is from David Satello. Okay, well, I'm not Dave, but I can tell you uh, my opinion on the cos cosmic egg. I had a little, um, another revisit to it today. And I'll be honest, I feel exactly the same way. I feel like um, this is, uh, where is it coming from? Like, it, I feel like it's almost taking people backwards in a sense, because it's like, we came to the flat earth because we were presented with a, a set of facts, factual data that we could observe for ourselves and use that physical evidence to refute what we had already learned in school. The model that we'd been presented as kids obviously disintegrated due to facts that we uncovered. But then when we move to this cosmic egg theory, it's like, what? So where, where, how can I observe any of this for myself? It's, you know, you're taking pieces of various ancient cultures. And this is not me sending shots that, you know, you do your thing. I'm not mad at it. I'm just giving you my opinion on it. And it's, you're taking pieces of other cultures, ancient cultures, and you're uh, putting, some, putting them to, together to create a model that nobody can observe, prove, measure. You know, we're just going back to this pseudo model, which it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. What they said that, you know, Saturn is a sun, Venus is a sun. I can't, you know, uh, how, you know, there's no, there's, I, I cannot personally relate to it physically, tangibly. It's just, <laughs> oh, it's, it's imagination. So I, I, I personally put it to one side, but this is a question from uh, David Satello who said, have you heard about the cosmic egg? What are your thoughts about the theory? Okay. Um, I'm not, I don't want to say too much because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of going on to this, uh, I'm going to this, uh, conference and uh, somebody talking about it but I don't I don't get hold with it um I don't really yeah. hold with this idea of syncretism really um yeah. I've already put my my thoughts out about uh uh you know about the work of certain people you know some people I actually uh you know respect greatly um you know I you know I like this particular person but I don't I don't agree with what he talks about mm. and I don't I can't follow what it what he is he's talking about. Um, my personal belief, um, you know, regarding the uh, Old Testament, um, you know, it tells you not to be looking at uh, you know astrology and stuff. It tell you know it tells you where that comes from. I've already told you know come yeah. out of this before and uh, kind of been attacked by by this person about it. But yeah, I don't really hold with it. Um, and you know, I'm not. Uh, yeah, let the guy talk about it. Let the guy explore it. Great, but it's not something I'm. I have any interest in whatsoever. Um, when are you battling next, Koje? Actually, I'm battling next uh, June second in Manchester. But you know, uh, you can add me on Facebook if you want to find out. Like, because I'll promote it on there. Um. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Where is any questions? I know there are probably some that I've missed. I'm trying to look through them. Holographic universe. I don't even know. Uh, is is that like simulation theory? Because like uh, I don't really subscribe to that. Either. Um. Yeah. It's a holographic universe. It's a, there's a there's a book. Yeah, I think I've heard of the book. Yeah. yeah. Who's it by? Talbot. Michael Talbot. Right. Okay. Um, I I, when I was uh, kind of into uh, the more the new age stuff and uh, um, linking it to quantum. Uh, quantum theory and stuff like that uh the holographic universe came to me and uh, yeah it was very very interesting um i i'm not sure where i i'm i'm we i am with that in, anymore mm -hmm. um there are a few very interesting things about it um one one of the things is uh for instance you can be hypnotized to actually see through people yeah, you can, you know, there's an experiment a uh, hypnotist did and he basically um, uh, had had an object uh, and and put this guy's daughter in front of um, in front of him and hypnotized hypnotized him to so that he couldn't see his daughter mm. at all. And uh, so his daughter was standing in front of him and behind the daughter, he had an object and he was saying to the guy, well, what 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 have I got in my hand? And he was looking through his daughter and he said he could see what was there. That's strange. Yeah. Um, also in that book was a really interesting experiment um, called the ink ink drop in glycerin experiment. 
okay? okay. So if you imagine a, a big tub of glycerin, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a, I don't know what you call it, like a, like clear hair gel or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a big tub of it, and you've got a handle on it so you can turn it around, yeah? Um, so so uh, some, the experimenter would, uh, would inject an ink blot, a blob inside the glycerin, yeah. yeah? And he could he could do sort of three or four in different colours and stuff, and um, you know just so you can see him floating in there. Okay, he'd turn the handle, and the the ink would start to diffuse out into the glycerin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So until it when it disappeared altogether. Okay. But the interesting thing is, if you turn the handle back the other way, eventually the the ink blob blobs will come back really telling you that there's no such thing as random in the universe it's what we call random is just another level of order so literally you've got all these blobs yeah and and you can do all sorts of things that, you know different colors or or sort of spin it round and then add another one and spin it round and they all come back in in order that's pretty incredible. Yeah, very incredible. So, so that book was uh, was full of uh, you know some really amazing things like that. Um, but the way I see it is that we're kind of like um, we're we're creations in the, in in the mind of the creator. Mm -hmm. Okay, the uh, relationship is like Oliver Twist to Charles Dickens. I know what you mean. So Charles Dickens will have an idea. He'll create a, a whole world for Oliver Twist to, to inhabit and it will populate that world of characters and, uh, you know, design the place that he lives and then lets him go and and have his own free will. And he literally, you know, Charles Dickens writes down what the guy does. Yeah. You know, what all the other characters do. But in the mind of uh, Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist is real and he's doing you know, having actions and doing things and having accidents and whatever, yeah? So imagine what uh, an infinite mind can do. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'll have to read into the book. Is it worth reading, would you say? Or? It's worth reading. Right, um, okay. But that's that's the, what I just said there was this mind, mind interpretation, interpretation of, of where I am now. I don't really go with the... Well, it is holographic, but... But then, uh, okay, so I, I reckon it, it, it does still fit because uh, one of the things that um, the holographic universe comes out with is the, um, that a hologram uses a kind of, um, like a kind of mathematics to, um, to figure out how to store uh, the, the, the data for, to, to build a hologram. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a kind of uh, a certain, it's called Fourier transforms, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out the brain uses the same Fourier transform for, uh, transforms for interpre interpre interpreting this 3D um, world that we're, we're experiencing. The whole of reality. Yes. So our brain stores um, the conception of this, this 3D reality in these mathematical terms right so if our brain does it then maybe the mind of the creator does it and uh, and so on yeah. so so yeah i'm you know if, if you think about it you know this whole universe could just be you you know around you just like a, a video game I've yeah. had these th kind of thoughts before, you know. Yeah. You kind of, <laughs> if you're playing video games all the time, you must. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder. Yeah. If it, yeah, but you know, the the character on screen that you're playing, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the whole world is created for that character. Yeah. And uh, you know, there are other characters moving in and out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if it's if that character is somebody else playing somewhere else, mm -hmm. well, again, that character is in in its own universe. But being projected into yours, yeah, yeah. So he doesn't exist in your universe, really. Yeah. This is in his own universe, yeah. But he, you're seeing him because you're you're having this sort of shared um, experience. Yeah, he's, not, he's literally not in your universe. He's in his own, just like your characters running around in your computer. 
Yeah. But the signal has been sent over to somebody else's computer and anyone else who's near you, is, you know, that signal has been sent. Mm -hmm. But he exists in your his, his own universe. So, you know, we are essentially we are all in our own universe mm -hmm. because, um, you know, when I reach out and touch you, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not actually um, really experiencing you. Yeah. Because, you know, the light bouncing off you, mm -hmm. going to the back of my eye, is your only experience turning into electrical signals. Yeah. 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 So the light itself isn't going to the back of my brain. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's being just processed. Electric, yes. It's being yeah. interpreted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I touch you, right, the electrical signals come from my, my, my skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, that's being interpreted. Everything. So I don't know what's out here. Mm. So really, I'm a, a point of awareness being fed information. Yeah. So you can imagine like um, a very, very complex brain, a very, very complex mind um, imagining this and just imagining different points of awareness mm. and feeding various information to those points of awareness and seeing what they do. Yes. It's interesting to postulate. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what, what can I say? It's just uh, just the thoughts I had since reading the uh, holographic universe. That's compelling. And then, and then sort of trying to um, imagine the mind of the Most High. Mm. It's compelling. Mm. I don't think I've ever ever really thought of it that way. I've had similar ideas with you know with the whole game thing. There's just prior to even maybe coming into the truth, you know, just in playing video games and having that kind of an idea, you know, mm. like what is what am I actually perceiving? You know, is what what is that I'm actually understanding here? Um, uh, I'm sure there's been other questions. Like people get mad because we're not answering questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Kyle Bunga Joe, population deception. I don't think there are seven billion of a billion of us. Actually, we had a conversation like maybe six months ago, right? Which I made a video about mm -hmm. the day afterwards, where it was like there could very easily, in my opinion, be under a billion people on the planet or the plane. Mm. That's just my interpretation because there are a lot of things that could lead to that. Um, well, coming to that conclusion, because, you know, we've seen uh, drastic changes in fert fertility rates and birth rates. Um, and we've been constantly exposed to more and more poisons, more things killing us. We've been in constant perpetual war. You know, there's just so many factors. And you got to consider that in the 1900s, the announced population was like 1 billion people. So we're saying that in the history of time, we only reached 1 billion in the history of all of time. And then in in 100 years, we multiplied that almost eight times. I don't see it. That's, that's almost incomprehensible. Yeah, and I'm usually saying. when it gets to that, like, I, yeah, I can't. I can't. You have to also take into consideration the Georgia Guidestones. What did they say? They said keep the population was at under 500 million. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they're already close to or even at that. Perhaps we're waiting for this massive depopulation event where people are going to, you know, SWAT teams are going to be rounding people up. And I'm not saying that's not going to happen. I'm just saying perhaps the population control is already being controlled, you know, uh, and they're already at their goal. So I agree with you. I don't believe that there's 7 billion people. There. Well, you know, if you if you factor in all the wars as well. That's what I'm saying. Perpetual know, war. It's like, how is that even possible? I mean, you know, World War Two. I mean, uh, the amount of carnage. I, and, I, you know, we're only trusting the figures that we've been they're, told. Yeah, they're very history, being given, you know? yeah. Um, World War One. there was like clouds of poison gas, you know, going across Europe and and... You know the the Spanish flu, so-called Spanish flu, which uh, I think was attributable to these this poison gas. Right. Um, and also, did you know that um, that pesticides were actually the biological weapons from World War Two? Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, <you laughs> what? Know, no, but wasn't it like mustard gas, or am I? Well, I the point is that uh, uh, I think it's Bayer. Uh, I think they were called Ig Farben, right? They mm -hmm. they were creating all this poison gas. And stuff and when the war ended there weren't any people to kill so they basically just rebranded the same poison gas as pesticide and they continue to kill people now millions of people yeah yeah through through, through, through the food it's just you know you know like <laughs> i was saying it's a it's a plan with the walmarts and stuff yeah yeah these people think 
in terms of a hundred years, centuries, two hundred years, literally whatever, centuries yeah? of planning. Yeah, and so we think things happen naturally and uh, you know organically. Yeah, but no, no, they're, they're Not planned. Even close. They're planned hundreds of years in advance, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we 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 have no. We have no conception of it. It's like playing a, a massive game of chess. Yeah. Not just, uh, you know, um, 16 pieces. You've got like a thousand pieces and, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of squares on the board. And, you know, you, you can't conceive it. You, you can't make any move. Yeah. You know, if yeah, you've got yeah. like, a, even if you've got like, you know, a thousand pieces, pawns, a thousand pawns, a thousand pawns, pawns and, <laughs> and, and there's like a million squares on the yeah. board, how do you move? What yeah. do you yeah you know you can't and they're they're, they're way ahead they're above the, the board they're you know they know what how to play the game and we don't so you know we've got no chance that way this this is what i actually tried to tell people um i did a live stream before i my channel got disabled with a bunch of strikes but um i did a live stream and uh someone was like oh you're a gatekeeper uh because you're telling people you know you have to come back to god and whatever else you know come back to the most high and I was like, listen, we're like at least we're decades too late, or maybe more than decades too late coming to the knowledge that we're coming to now. We can make a difference by bringing people into the truth to find it for themselves. But what what else do you want to do? Do you want to like you start a militia, you know, you know, no. join the, you know, it's not happening. There's nothing you can do in you to fight the system within the system. And whether you want to be or not, you're in it. You were born into it, you know? Um, so yeah, this is the, the best you, we can do as people is to can you continue doing things like this and continue talking to our neighbors and our friends and our family about these things so that, you know, they can come to the truth for themselves. Um, well, I've, I've already said that, um, that I think, you know, the, the window for us actually being able to do something closed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the only thing left is, um, you know, divine inter intervention. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Um, I've been saying that the Old Testament is the most high's road most high's roadmap of what will happen. Yeah, the New Testament, especially Revelation, is the elite's roadmap of what they want to happen. Yeah. So you can see them actively pushing all the things that's uh, you know in in the uh, in Revelation basically you know the mark of the beast the the monetary yeah. uh, monetary system that you have to have have to be chipped for or something you know um you know the beasts from the pit and, and all this stuff you know they're, they're they're actively trying to make that bring happen. it about yeah yeah um but i'm saying it's it's all to no avail because the most high has already already seen how it's going to happen you know how it's all going to turn out and he's written he's told us what's what's going to happen mm -hmm. So, and at the same time, we're seeing that as well mm. coming to pass. Yeah. yeah? Um, we're, we're, we're literally seeing that, uh, you know, the, there's a whole swath of people being removed off this planet. Planet. Plane. Yeah, I, I see it. it indoctrination it goes deep. It goes it? very deep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's word magic. Yes. So, yeah, the, it's, it's, it's already happening. It's already being, um, you know, the... the the plagues of Egypt are already here, you know. Um, don't want to go in. I'm, I'm actually doing a video. Um, I actually just rendered it a little while ago that uh, I'm going to be releasing about the uh, the prophecies and judgment mm. and uh, and how the, the plagues of Egypt are already here. They're already um, taking effect. But this time, the media is being used against people so they don't know that uh, anything's going on, you know. You might hear of uh, something strange like, you know, a million fish washing up and dead on a shore somewhere. But uh, then it disappears. And yeah. you, don't, you don't hear the other stories that go with it, you know. Um, I haven't even seen this video yet, so I'm <laughs> looking forward to watching it mm. uh, when it does drop. As we, we've, been here, we've been here a couple hours, just under a couple hours. Um, let's see what else is in the chat here. Well, we don't want to uh, stay on too long and bore people. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll throw up some questions into the into the chat. Um, have you heard about Canadian police AI that predicts crime? 
Oh, that was that was a story a while back, you know, the uh, minority report idea, yeah. Um, you know what? At the end of the day, they don't care about crime. Yeah, they use crime as a as an excuse. Yeah, it's 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 not about uh, pre preventing crime. It's about um, surveillance. It's about um, you know keeping us in that. Was it the panopticon mm. um, where you know we're being watched from all sides and uh, we're being monitored and anything we do, you know, can be tracked, traced. And uh, and you know monitored and and prevented and you know we controlled and yeah. whatever. It's not about um, fighting crime. It's never been about fighting crime. Of course, they don't care about crime. Well, of course, they don't you know, care about crime. They use it as a as a tool to get the 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 um, supplies they need, the the manpower they need. You know, they say, oh, there's more crime and we need more police. There's and, more crime. Let's get a tank yeah, for well, a population a, of a thousand yeah. people in the town. Like, <laughs> yeah, we, we need an F F16 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. There'll be police F16s. No, you know, yeah, it's never been about crime. Um, let's go. We'll answer a couple more and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Uh, did dinosaurs exist? Uh, um, for me, no. I'll say that because uh, dinosaur bones didn't really start getting found at all until like the 1900s, late 1800s. And then they started popping up loads of places. It's like the ancient cultures never found a dinosaur bone ever. Never. And then all of a sudden, dinosaur bones become a lucrative market because, you know, it opens it up to all sorts of fraud. And uh, when you go to the museum, you think you see a dinosaur. They'll even admit that those bones there aren't the real bones. And in fact, the real bones are under lock and key. And they've just created their own interpretation. Like some guy's been like, well, they found like a rib, <laughs> like this one bone. And he's created an entire structure out of it and said, this is what I think it's going to look like. And then he's gotten a whole bunch of other scientists to agree with him. And now it's fact. That's, that's what happens in these kinds of communities. Well, um, Personally, I think there there were some things that we would call dinosaurs. Really? So large, large, large creatures, because um, there have been historical reports of uh, like Marco Polo um, going to China, and uh, you know the 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 emperor had a dragon. Um, had a dragon? Yeah, dragons. Are, but I suppose if if we're talking about like mythological, almost what what's passed down in myths, and I guess it's a bit different. But if we're talking about dinosaurs in the sense of dinosaurs, so you know, like I don't know, I can't I can't imagine there being you know like a T Rex running around. No, no, I think stuff. I think I think um, that uh, the the sort of herbivores, or the large herbivores, yeah, mm -hmm. were were around, um, but and and maybe. Um, you know some some of these uh, sort of like velociraptor type things. Really? Well, I don't know. I mean, I can't, again, again, at the end of the day, matter, it doesn't does it? matter. Yeah, it, doesn't, I don't it, care. it doesn't matter. I really it's don't care. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's why, true. Why, you know what? Okay, so so there weren't any dinosaurs, and there's a, a, a museum full of bones there that you know I, I I've only gone once when I was a kid. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, it didn't do anything for me, you know? But that, I, that's why I say, I say dinosaurs are for kids, man. Like, <laughs> dinosaurs are for kids. That's what... Right. So, so what, how does that help my life? How, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, there weren't dinosaurs. It was like, oh, I've been tricked again. But we've been tricked every every which way. Yeah. You know? <laughs> seriously. Seriously. Uh, okay, we'll grab... Um... Can you address mere survival versus really living? If we are not participating in the system, oh, it's just the comments going too fast. If we are not participating in the system, then we have no access to guitars, computers, etc., to self-express and enjoy our time. So we just sit around. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. You know, <clears throat> you don't have to say. You know, everything is evil. I'm not gonna. You know, take part in anything that. We're in, we're in the system. Like I said earlier, you know, you're in the system whether you want to be or not. The point is you should withdraw yourself from being uh, worldly as such. Like look around at the kind of things that are happening and know that you have set yourself apart from all these things. Um, I wouldn't say, oh yeah, you know, put your, put everything that you like away um, and just kind of live in a corner and, you know, live on air. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's not what I would say to do. I don't think it's necessary to do. Just be aware of how you're living and, and live 
correctly, I would say, to the scriptures more than anything else. Well, I would say that, you know, that's a, that is a, a, a pretty stupid view. I mean, sorry, I'm not calling you stupid. I think it's a stupid view. Yeah, that, um, the, oh, yeah, without this system, then you wouldn't have anything. Well, you know, just just go. You probably don't hear anything that comes out of Africa, but you go to Africa um, where people don't have very much. Mm. Yeah, they don't have access to a lot of a lot of stuff, but they make things. They yeah. I, I've seen I've seen um, some kid uh, like get a uh, an old bicycle that's been you know totally smashed up. Yeah, and it's been able to salvage like the pedals and the uh, chain and you know, a couple of bits and pieces. Mm. And he's made a, a bike out of wood. Yeah, literally just made a wooden bike. I, and yeah, I've like, seen some crazy stuff coming out of there, right. like crazy inventions. Yeah, and and just look at hip hop. Okay, mm. you got the the black community. Right, yeah. who have no the literally got no money they've had no no access to money whatsoever you know there are people who are creative and mu musical but they can't they can't afford instruments mm -hmm. yeah so one guy finds an old broken um record player yeah and he invents scratching it's grandmaster yeah flash. grandmaster flash yeah yeah he invents yeah. scratch the so he makes music mm. <laughs> with a, an old record and an old record player yeah, and it turns into a, an amazing musical form. Yeah, that's yeah? been trashed been and trashed. pulled apart and turned into garbage. <laughs> I'm personally affected by that. Mm. <laughs> I don't like but that. But there's there's a there's like everything in this society, mm. right? You know, is is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everyone true. thinks, well, I can't live without my smartphone. Yeah. Yeah, I've got rid of mine. Dumb right. phones all the way. Get okay. one that can text and call, and it, the, your battery lasts for five days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, most people these days, I'd say my generation especially. If you know people in my generation, or you are of my generation, then you'll know this. Most people don't even like picking up the phone. They don't mm -hmm. like to pick up the phone. So what? They don't even use the phone part of their phone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, well, I mean, what is a phone for? It's supposed to be for communication, but it's turning you into somebody who can't communicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You um, you dump your smartphone or for 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 two weeks. Yeah. Once you get over the withdrawal symptoms, you don't need it. Yeah, yeah. You don't give a give a toss about it. Um, yeah, I'm completely over it. Like completely, is nothing to me. Sometimes I think, oh, maybe it would have been cool, you know, to like film live or something. But it's not like you know, it's, that's like. I was by the by. I was talking to somebody. I, I think it was um, another live stream. Uh, them saying, um, but without technology, you know, we wouldn't be able to talk. You know, because so and so's in Australia. You know, so and so's in America. So and so's, uh, you know, in in Scotland. You know, without this technology, we wouldn't be able to talk. Mm -hmm. But I said, that's right. But you know what? I'd be talking to Just people around here. me yeah, yeah. who who are more important than these people in, in other countries because they're part of my community, part, part of my your experience. My yes, my environment. Yeah. So so yeah, they, we've been taken away from what's real by this fake stuff. Yeah. And for for somebody to say, well, what are we going to do without all this fake stuff? Well, we'll do real we'll stuff do. instead. You know. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very true. Okay, should we take one more, or should we? Yeah, I think um, we don't want to bore people. Yeah, right. This okay. Is a yeah. Couple of hours is enough. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll close it out then. Uh, but thank everybody for the questions. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, I hope you got a lot of insight. You probably did. Uh, <laughs> usually do. I do anyway. I don't know about you guys. So like, um, yeah. Thank you guys for listening, and I suppose we'll catch you on the next one. Well, cheers. See ya.